base it off, and then you know what formula to use based off which way the triangles are pointing. Yeah. Now the the hard one here is is well, what is g of three? So you ask yourself, is is three less than or equal to three? Um. Yeah, it is. It is. So that means use the first one, three plus eight. Three plus eight. So then that's 11. Yeah. So then um, that means it's Let's obviously do. greater than three. Right. No, no. It, it works in one or the other. It only ever works in one or the other, never both. So three is less than or equal to three. That's true. So the one that's uh -huh. true in, you, you go until you find the one that's true. So then, okay, wait. So you have, so I, under, I understand how you get to the point where it's like you plug in the formula, but what happens when you get that actual answer? You're done. That's it. You got, oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the final example with the top formula, and I was look like I was not looking at that right. So sorry, that is correct. Okay, sorry. no problem here. All right, so let's do another one here. Let's do h of negative six. H of negative six. So you start by asking yourself: Is negative six less than or equal to negative two? Um. Okay, I'd say yes, because bigger is zero, right? Yeah, so on a number line, three, four, five, six, you got to figure out which one is more to the left. More to the left. Okay, yeah. yeah. So then that would be true. Or okay, yes, however, the best answer would be for that. Yeah. So yes, this one is less than or equal to negative two. So use the top one. So then I would take one half parentheses minus six parentheses minus four yes. equals minus three minus four equals to negative seven. There you go. Now how about H of negative two? Um, Okay, wait, so I look at it and I plug it into the formula. You always plug it into the into the inequality part first. Is negative what do you two mean less than exactly by this, like inequality part? So this is the inequality part. This is really the domain part. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, okay. So that's how you determine which one it's going to be. So if it's minus two, it's the exact same as minus two, which would make it be the top one, correct? Yeah. Okay, so then um, you get one half parentheses minus two, which then makes it negative one minus four, which equals negative five. Good. All right. Um, uh, so the let's go to the first one, because I think this is the most confusing. So notice there's no x's in the action in the function part. Oh. Uh, but that doesn't matter. You, you that's that's what the output is. So f of negative five, you again ask yourself, is negative five less than or equal to zero? Yes. It is. So you just put three down because three is is the output. Okay, so I just would write that one first number right there. Yes. What is f of zero? Um, f of zero would be also the just three. I mean, yeah, very three. Good. Yep, very good. It would have to be equal to. Okay. Do you have any? I didn't see any on this page. Anywhere you've got three pieces. Um, sorry, could you repeat that? Yeah, I'll just make one up here, and you can tell me if you saw this in class. Um, f of x equals absolute value of x minus 1 for x less than negative 3, x squared minus 4 for 
Negative yeah, three less than one to X like less. Than... Well, it could be graphs, but it could be. Uh... You know what? It could be uh, for like x greater than like so. This this is the this is where it's a little more difficult because you have to figure out which piece it's in. I can uh -huh. give you as many pieces as. Yeah. Okay. That's. Um, I have a paper that was just notes, but it's called graphing with parameters. And could I just send you an email of it real quick? Because I'm course, pretty yeah. sure it's what yeah, you're talking course. about. All right, well, we will do some graphing, but I, I wanted to, like, this one, I, I was hoping you could tell me, like, what is F of, uh, you know, like, negative two, for example. Uh -huh. that, that, that's that's the kind of problem we want we want to be able to do or, or have you ready for. Um, so the, And these notes are a little funky, just as a heads up. My teacher wanted us to do Cornell notes and then what? found out class? no one would say what? In math class? Yeah, so, and obviously no one was really doing it. So then they got mad. So they like made the handouts in Cornet, Cornell notes style, which I don't know. I mean, it works, but it's a little unorthodox, I guess. I believe I just sent it over. All right, I'll take a look here. Ah, uh, all right. So, the okay. No, they're just showing you how to graph these, making a table, which we will get to. Yeah, we'll okay, definitely get to. Um, but could we, could you just try this one for me, please? Yeah, for sure. So am I just going to insert negative two into all of those formulas? No, no. You have to figure out which one it works in. It only works in one of them. Um, I mean, I guess probably x squared minus four. Why? Why does it go there and not the first one? Because the first one it would just still be in the, the absolute value bars. And I'm not sure if that would make it. No, no it, It's always the inequality part. Is negative two less than negative three? Oh, I was looking at that like too literally almost. You start you start over here on the right. Yeah. Um I think it would Yeah, it would definitely be X is less than negative three. No, it wouldn't because negative two is more than negative three. Um it would be the one below it, minus three is less than or equal to minus two, which is less than two. So could you give me the, uh, now could you evaluate it there in that middle one and tell me the result? Um, like, would I be inserting negative two within? Yes into this middle one within that middle one yeah so oh okay so basically i just figure out which one it matches up with and then when i know then i insert it into the thing on the left that's right that's exactly right okay now i get it all right yeah so then that would be minus two squared which would be positive four minus four which equals zero okay very good could you find a f of two Um, all right, f of two would be x is greater than or equal to two. So then that would be minus four plus one, which is negative three. Good. All right. Um, any questions on that? Um, 
No, I don't think so. Just like always kind of start right to left. For so the, the uh the uh the next thing is um graphing. Um Just looking out instead of a bunch of other stuff here. I mean, do you do you want me to just talk generally about graphing, or there and do some of the problems on the first email you sent, or do you want um, do you want to look at some of these in particular? I'd say I want to. Okay, maybe there's problems uh, nineteen, twenty, and twenty one, and half of the page is kind of blank. That's on the first email you sent, I believe. Yeah. And yeah. it's just kind okay. of giving like those two choices. I think I'd like to know um, how to know like what numbers I put in yeah. for like the two parts, like if it's zero, one, two, or like three, four, five, and then how the arrow works in that scenario. Cause I know like there's a certain way that arrows point, like according to your equation. Yeah. So I've got, uh, I've got 19 up. And we're going to graph this. Okay, so you start with the first one. The first one, x plus 3, is good for x less than or equal to 0. So you start with the number. And what is less than or equal to 0? Is that less than or is it is it greater than? What is that? What less is this than right or equal to 0. would have to yes. be like minus 1 and minus, minus 2. Minus 1, minus 2. two. There you go. Okay, and then you have to put the, the next thing is is because it's a less than or equal to, I like to make a note that it's a filled in dot. Oh, that's the other thing. Yeah, how's it? How do I know if it's filled in or an open dot? Right. So, so it's filled in because it's a less than. Or <laughs> Bless me. Would you put zero, negative one, and negative two into this top one and give me the uh, the y values? Yeah. Um, zero and positive three, minus one and positive two, minus two and positive one. Uh, like that. Okay. So now we go to the graph. You want to graph as you go. So I'm going to do that in, uh, I guess I'll use red here. Let me do this one in red. Uh, so zero, three, negative one, two, and negative two, one, like that. Mm-hmm. Now the uh, there, there's this division uh, of the of the 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 piecewise function is divided at zero. So this is only good left of zero. So you start at that first point. You have to go to the left. So the arrow always has to point left of zero. Well, the first if it's less than less than or equal to that's left. Uh huh. Typically, it's a less than or equal to first, and then a greater than. So then I'm assuming greater than goes to the right? Right, yeah, right of zero. And then it's possible for that first one to be right of, so it would be going up, and then the second one would be left of. and It, would it be could be, down. yeah, depending on what your instructor does. So but for the next graph here, for the next one, you, you make another table, and you start at zero, but this time you're getting bigger, so one and two, but you make a note that it's an open circle in that first point. That first point is an open circle because of the greater than. Okay, so less than is closed, greater than is open. No, no. Less than or greater than are open, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to are closed, filled in. Oh, okay, so if there's an equal to, it's closed. That's right. And then if it's no, not normal but like we'll just say normal normal then it's open then now give me the uh the y values here for this um okay or zero two and four so zero zero one two two four okay, so i'll do that in blue here and you want to really make sure that open circle is open one, two is closed, two, four is closed. 
And is then it possible you go, to have an opened, closed, open? You'd need more than the two functions. Um, I'm sorry. I uh, don't know why I switched my... <laughs> it's all good. Don't worry. Okay. Share screen. All right. So the uh, this one's to the right. So it's only at the edge points that you have to worry about open and closed. All the other ones are filled in. So all the others are filled in. Okay. Uh -huh. So it's usually just two, right? Like two lines. Well, I mean, I just gave you an example up here where it was three, so it could be three. Oh, I guess that's true. Yeah. So basically writing out the example. Okay, so they give you basically the formula and the thing, and you just have to know, like, okay, if it's less than zero – then it has to be negative numbers. And if it's like more than three, then it has to be like four, five, six. And then you just put it into the like, equate not a necessarily equation, but the part on the left, which allows you to get your actual coordinates. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's look at another one here. This one's a little bit different. All right, so the first uh, the first one is a little bit different. It says x is between negative six and three. So you for sure do the endpoints. Oh, but at the negative six, it's filled in, and at the three, it's an open circle. And so that's because. It's starting less than or equal to starting less than or equal to, and then it becomes just normal, not normal, but like not less than or equal to just bigger yeah. or less yeah. than, yeah, which then causes it to become open. Okay, so now you're going to put both of these values into the into the function. Okay. At the at the at the first one, even though even though and it kind of goes against what we're doing, but you still do it anyway. You evaluate it the one even when it's not there. Uh huh. So in the three x minus four, my equals three x minus four. So what number am I plugging? In exactly negative negative six and then positive three. So it's gonna be like okay, so I'd say like negative eighteen minus four is negative twenty-two. So it'd be like yep. minus six and negative twenty-two. Yep. And then three would be nine minus four, which is five. Good. And then okay. now the problem with this one is like it's not on your graph. I don't know. Uh -huh. just, um why did I do it? So they did say yeah, your teachers. Um, <laughs> it's just it's just uh, making this so much harder. So uh, let's go to three five. So three five one 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 two three four five. Open circle there. Make sure it's really open. Okay. Uh -huh. And then you can see I kind of put like a, a gap in here. But let's do another point. Let's do like zero so we can get another point. So yeah, like. I don't have to write like two, one, zero, minus one, all the way to minus six. No, no, yeah, but you do want to get the endpoints if there if it exists. So zero oh. is negative four. So that's there. Yeah. And then you're basically off the graph. So you kind of want to be like, well, that's you know, there's that's about you know, negative six, it should, you know, negative six, negative yeah. twenty-two. Okay. But you really want to be very emphatic that that's an open circle.
Yeah. Okay, so open circle, closed circle, and then another closed circle. And then we're going to make another x, y thing for the the three to six. We're going to put those two endpoints there. The first one is filled in. The second one is open. And I would like you to put three and six into this uh Yeah, um, so that would be, does it matter which one I start with at all? Like, I don't think so, right? I like to do them in the order they appear left to right, smallest Uh, to okay, largest. yeah, I'll say seven, three, seven, and then four, six, four. And then if I say zero, just so I have that third point in the middle. Zero, zero is not in the middle, though. And, and I only Yeah, did or that because this. not in the middle, but like just. So it's there. Oh, wait, no. You're right. Zero would be very bad in this. I should do like four. Again, only if you need to, because in the case of this previous one, we were going to get off the graph. I mean, that's that's Oh. why. So at three, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's filled in. Six, four. One, two, three, four is open. And then you're connecting the two. And then... So that There's would no be going arrows. There's no arrows in this one because you have you have you have fixed endpoints. These are all these are fixed. mm -hmm. So what how do I know when something's a fixed endpoint rather than just something that would go on for infinity? So this has bounds on both sides of the of the letter, whereas this had only a bound on one side of the letter. Sorry, If it's, could you repeat that one more time? yeah, the negative six and three are boundaries. Uh-huh. Three and six are boundaries. Oh, and then if it's like But if it not says it's, negative numbers. if it's, if it's greater than zero, that just means one side is a boundary. The other is un, what's called unbounded. Yeah, so then that means there's a starting point and never a finishing point. Right. And that's a bad thing. I mean, unboundedness is a problem. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. I think that that makes sense now. Because if you think about it technically, like it really is just kind of obvious. <laughs> All right, um, so there's like, we could do uh, 22, 23, 24, some of those in there. Do you see one that you would like to do out of that grouping? Um, I think, let's see, I'm just going to look at the paper. Yeah, I mean, I guess whatever you think would just be good for the next part. I mean, I'd like to see you graph one of them on your own here. Like, it, they're all about the same. Um, yeah, yeah, because most of this is just you know repeated actions, just different numbers. but but we'll get we'll get some of this. But why don't you just? I'd like you to try twenty two now on your own and uh, ask me questions. But I'd like you to try graphing it, and then I will do the same. I'll put up the correct graph. Sounds good.
Okay, so I believe what I have here is for my coordinates for 2x plus 3, x is less than 4, 0, 3, or 0, minus 1, minus 2. First one would be 0, 3, then minus 1, positive 1, minus 2, negative 1, and then... Okay, but the first one though, you, you better even. I know it doesn't fit on the graph, but you have to start at four. Oh, I have to start at four. You have to start wherever the dividing point is. So, and you and you'll find you'll find that it it doesn't fit on the graph, which man, that's not great. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's it's up here somewhere. It's an open circle. Uh -huh. uh, but so, you can go backwards. I mean, you can you can go you can put you you can go three two, but you know you they have to be less than four. The x values have to be less than four. Okay, so what I was doing was I was writing it, and I was like, "Oh, okay, the y values literally cannot be bigger than four for some reason. I don't know No, why no, I did this, that. no, the X, yeah, the X values, the Y's, you know, where they're kind of open. So, okay, so the first X value always is the number that's given, Yes. inserted, and then in this case, it has to be less than, so it would be three and two. Right. But, but maybe, like you said, I mean, maybe there's a better place, like you could put zero, zero in because then you get, a, you know, you get a point on the graph. Uh -huh. I mean, it's up to you. I, it's just, Yeah. they, they, these numbers are, are not, Practical. not great, practical, but you got to be able to, you know, get something. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Um, I'll let me edit the second part Yeah. just because I'm making Second the same mistake. one. Yeah. Give that a try, please. Okay, so now I have four positive three, five positive four, six positive five. Okay. Is it an open or closed circle at the first one? Closed. It is closed. Let's go ahead and graph that. Um, like you graph it or me graph it or both. You graph it. You graph it and I'll, I'll check. Okay. Um, I'm just using those coordinates, correct? Yes. All right. Um, So the arrow would be pointing up to the right and it all be closed. So it it's uh it would look something like that. Yeah, that's what mine looks like. Roughly. Okay. Let's have you try one more of these before we move on to something else. 23 is a good one. Um, yeah, try to do it on your own. Ask questions if you are unsure. Okay, this one I'll actually put this stuff in right. Okay, so for my first graph, I have an open circle at the starting part, which would be two and three. Isn't Then it a less next, than or equal to? it is. So should that be open or closed? Uh, I thought it would be open, but now I'm assuming it would probably be closed.
So let's go back. We, we made a little chart earlier. You got to remember this. Less than, greater than, go with the open. If that's got the line underneath, it's filled in. All right. Yeah, so then <sighs> that would be filled, two, three, then filled, one, four, and filled, zero, five. And since it is going, since it's less than, it's going to the left. Okay. So the arrow would be pointing up, I believe. Okay, yeah, keep going. And then I'll start writing out all the coordinates for the X minus one problem. So then now we'll have a open circle. No, yes, open circle, sorry. And then first square would be two positive one, three and two, and four and three. And the arrow would be pointing up towards the right. All right, you got it. You got it, good job. Um, so that's kind of everything on graphing piecewise, at least the tube that you see. There is kind of the going backwards, the matching, which could be difficult. Um, <laughs> the, yeah. the, the, the harder problem here, let me, I'm just going to grab one and we'll, we'll just um, forget for a moment that you have options. Um, one type of problem you'll see in your test is where they give you the graph. I don't like, well, we'll go with this one. This is a uh, one and three, by the way. I don't like this one. I really don't like this one. It's um, the graph should be easier to do. Yeah, let's let's actually do uh, let's not do this one. Okay. All right, forget that. Uh, so here's a better graph. So the piecewise function has this form. And you have to decide how many pieces are there. So how many pieces do you see? Um, oh, okay, yeah, this is what I would like to work on. So I see, am I looking at it from a start of like zero, zero? Nope, you're looking at like where is the division between them? Um, Where's the, the division break point? Is I mean, they're both on the x coordinate of two and two. the y coordinate of positive one and negative two. So that, like, on the left is piece one, on the right is piece two. Yeah. So you actually start. You actually start with the inequality first. So, like, this one on the left is good for x less than two. It's a less than because it's an open circle. Uh -huh. That's it's two true. because because that's where it is. And that one has to be equal to because it's closed. Greater than or equal to two because it's closed. So you do the you do the inequality or the domain part first. So then. Okay, wait. So we get those part or that part. So now we know like what we're working with. How do we know what formula, yeah, we'll to that. formula we're so, using? So, so the left one over here, this is a line. Uh -huh. What's the what is the equation of a line that you know? Oh uh, my god, y two minus y one over mx plus b. Uh, mx plus b. So where does this cross the y axis? At zero negative four. Okay, so B is negative four. What is the slope of the line? What's the rise over the run? Um, Just one over one, I believe. Okay, so it's that simple. You don't have to overcomplicate it. It's one X minus four. One X minus four. Yeah. Okay, all right. So then I guess the second one's a little bit weird because it's just zero. It's a straight line. It's got a slope of zero. It's a horizontal line. 
Horizontal lines are always y equals a number. What is the number there for the horizontal line? Um, a two, a two, zero two. What is the y? What is the y value always? Y is always oh, it what? It is huh? always one. Yes. So then, is it one x? No. Horizontal lines are just y equals a number. So then I'm done for that part pretty much. Yep. You want there to be more, but there's not. That's it. <laughs> All, right. All right. Let me see if I can find another one like this. Yeah, because the teacher was saying that like they didn't want to show it to the class because it'd be confusing or whatever. So I'm glad that we're looking at it. Yeah. Uh all right, so here we go. All right, so here's a uh, here's a graph. What is the break point between the two pieces? Um, they're both on x coordinate two. Yeah, and I think it's good to draw something to indicate that there's the left region and the right region. Yeah. Okay. So tell me about the left region. What what is x? What what are the x values that are allowed for this left region? Um, x values allowed. Um. So it's two. One. It, okay. So is it? Here are the possibilities. X greater than 2, X greater than or equal to 2, X oh. less than 2, X less than or equal to 2. Um, I would say X is less than or equal to 2. Yes. And that's because it's filled in. Now, how about the second one? Um, the second the right, one. The one to the right. It's an open circle. That would be... I mean, greater than or equal you to seem, two. You, you seem uncertain. We we we've done this yeah, I was, I was many just times. You gotta you the, gotta get comfortable with this. Yeah. And this. I was just looking at it at a point where I'm just like, there's not like I was just making sure the y coordinates wouldn't be playing into effect because like obviously on that one the y coordinates are going down. Okay, so the one on the left is a line here. So it's an mx plus b. What is the y intercept? Um, the y intercept is zero, negative one. Negative one. What is the slope of this? Um, it looks like two over one. Two over one is going up two and right one. One point one over two. I don't. I don't know how to. Okay. Well. So one over two would be up one and right two. No, it's so it's going up down down down, down to right one. So negative two, two over two one. one. Yeah, there you go. That's minus two x minus one. Okay. Now for the second one here, if I were to ask you the same thing. Like, where's the y-intercept? You would say it doesn't cross the y-axis. But if you were to extend this line, where would it cross? Um, Got it kind of covered up there, but... Like, okay, wait, sorry. So if you extend the line, like that starting point, like it would be at 0, 4, yeah. correct? Yeah, so that's the b-value. What's the slope of this red line? Um, It is... Two over one, one over one. Okay, so slope of one over one would be going up one and right one. Minus one, positive one. Yeah, so minus one x. Minus one x. Yeah. Okay, so then that's just it. And I'm never gonna, will I ever end up like making a graph based off like those numbers or something on future problems? 
I mean, the, the two types of problems are I give you the fun piecewise function and you graph it, or I give you the graph and you write the function. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, let's All see right. if you Well, can let's see if you can really quickly do this one before we run out of time. So I'll help out here. Uh f of x. Um, so it looks like minus two x minus two, yeah. and then our mx plus b um, would be minus minus one, no, one over one, I think. Okay, I agree. It's going up into the right, so it's a positive slope. And then the b coordinates. Uh, minus two. If you or, continued, so is it like if if you continued it up, where would it hit? The uh, it would be like one one in ten or one two three four five six six like one in six. One two three four five. I got five. Five. Oh my bad. Yeah, I did not count that right. Okay, so one yeah. x plus five. When X plus how about, five. How about this horizontal line here? Then the horizontal line is always negative two. So that would be why, B. Why is always negative two? And then that's just it. That's it. Horizontal line is one number. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to just go over these notes. Thank you. Yeah.